Okay, good evening and welcome to The Egg. Um, I'm Morvan Hughes and I work with Club Flix, which is an extraordinary group of prolific young filmmakers um, based in and around Bath, who came up with the idea for this event several months ago. Their idea was to bring together a group of successful film and TV creatives from a wide spectrum of industry backgrounds to debate the future of film and TV in the UK, and in particular to look at issues affecting young people, such as training, employment, career progression, and developments in multi-platform media and online distribution. I'll let them all introduce themselves and uh, then we can get started. Can we start with Joanna? Um, I'm an independent filmmaker and I've worked in television for a long time, but I made my first film a couple of years ago, which is just about to come out. I'm Gavin Henderson, I'm Head of Programmes at Endmore West. I've been at Endmore UK, a brand which most people will know, for about six years and in Bristol for about four. I'm David Sproxton, co-founder of Ardman Animations, so we do animated feature films, uh, television broadcast work like Sean Sheep, and uh, TV commercials, and a lot of stuff for online. I'm Liam Seidel, I'm a young filmmaker, and I've been planning this event with Club Flix for about two months now. And um, this event for me was kind of what young filmmakers wanted to ask the professional people um, to how to get into the industry, but also it's for industry professionals as well, for how the future is going to go for the British film and TV industry. Hi, I'm Mark Lever. I'm Director of Development at Southwest Screen, which is a development agency for film, TV, digital media in the Southwest. Um, prior to joining Southwest Screen, uh, three, three and a half years ago, I have a background in uh, commercial TV, post-production and uh, digital media. Hi there, my name is Jeff Taylor. Um, I graduated last June um, and since then I've been a freelance filmmaker working for various Bath and Bristol production companies. Um, I've just been UK I've just been UK funded to make a digital short and that's premiered at Encounters Festival in November. Okay, thank you. Um, we're going to start with a quote just to kick the debate off. This is a quote from the BBC um, website um, from two days ago by Rory Kethan Jones. He says, the industry seems to have decided that in the future there will be two kinds of television, the cheap and democratic stuff and the ultra high quality version which only the professionals can afford to make. I would like to start by asking, um, yeah, Endemol. What's the Endemol take on that, please? Um, I think it's an interesting quote. I'm not entirely sure it makes much sense, actually, at the moment. Um, the industry has decided that it seems to be a two polar opposites type. I mean, the industry ultimately serves what the viewer is interested in, and there are rate cards for different slots on TV, so some programmes will be more expensive than others. So if you're trying to make a children's programme for CITV, it's going to be £30,000 for half an hour. If you're trying to make Planet Earth, it's going to be millions of pounds over budget. Um, that has always been the case, and programme makers divide up the budget via the commissioners. Um, I think what is changing is the way people access TV. Um, I think television itself is changing. The concept of television is becoming much more content-based than a static box in the corner of the room which has a sort of linear narrative. That in itself is becoming more democratic and obviously then will be, will be changing. But I think it's a good thing that people are getting more of a, a say into what programmes are being made um, and actually, I don't quite understand that, but I'm not, I certainly don't agree with it. Thank you. What do you feel from Ardman's point oh, of from view? From Ardman's point of view, it's interesting because the, what we do for TV is actually pretty expensive in terms of budget is up there with costume drama. So um, most of what we have to do is, is uh, based on funding through co-productions, in other words, partnering with overseas stations and commissioners or Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, RDF in Germany, and so you're making um, a piece of television which is, has to suit quite a large market, um, an overseas market, an American market, and a UK. It's very much focused on a UK market. And as um, Gavin was saying, the UK funding, say for children's television in, in our case, is relatively small compared to budgets that are available for more adult time slots. But our stuff is expensive. And so the same thing goes really... To, for, um, well, planet, the Blue Planet programmes or costume drama, they're made, the only way you can make them is with co-production money from overseas stations. So they, they have to be bigger, they have to be more universal. 
um, and you have to be able to sell them. Most of what a lot of people want to watch is a, mo is a more local sort of thing, isn't it? You want locality is good, currency is good. In other words, it's happening now. The live Big Brother type thing is, is but it's very restricted. It's for the UK. It's the UK only, which is only well, on a good day. You might get 10 million viewers, I suppose, on a really good day. Um, and inevitably, in terms of television advertising, you are into how many people are watching and how, what does that drive in terms of advertising revenue. And with the multitude of channels now, that money get or those eyeballs get diluted. You've only got 24 hours in a day. You've only got one life. You can watch three or four channels simultaneously if you really want to, but most most people don't. So there is there's a huge sea change. In fact, the industry is probably more saying, "What's television doing now?" And how do we serve the public? And the BBC, in many ways, are ahead of the game with uh, um, iViewer. It's now television on demand rather than television by appointment. And that's the big thing, is you people you watch television when you want to watch it and what you want to watch. And we as producers can make content uh, for you that you'll want to watch. And the question is, how do you, how do you access it? And that's quite a big shift, isn't it, really? That, that's, so I don't quite agree with that either. I don't think it's the industry... I think there's been a huge technical shift with you know, high quality imagery going through broadband systems has dramatically changed what a broadcaster has to try and do. And the economics have radically changed, as Endemol probably know, over the last five or six years um, in terms of um, advertising revenue. So, yeah, it's a it's not quite as simple as that. Well, um, from the point of view of someone who's come from a TV background and, and into feature film, Joanna, do you have a different take on this? Well, I, I, I have a problem in that I don't watch very much television. But, uh, but I, uh, and I maybe see sort of in a way, um, well, certainly for me, yes, it's not something that's part of my life. However, I do a lot at my computer. So I can boast that I don't watch television, but in fact, I'm, I'm looking at a screen a lot of the time. And maybe that is the future of television anyway, that you're going to be sitting at your computer screen, like you say. You know, it's, it's sort of video on demand. It's choosing to replay programs that have already been broadcast. So it's very much at a, at a kind of computer-based level. And, and you know, <coughs> you're, sort of, you, you, you're kind of one person watching a screen. So you've got a very individual relationship with it, sort of family sitting around watching the telly together anymore. Um, Does that change how you approach making film then? As a director, you're communicating with an audience of one through the screen rather than a cinema audience, or, or does that not really register at the I, moment? I think my approach to making films is completely different. I don't really align that to the television work that I was doing. I was very much working within the system. I was working on television series, drama television series within, I mean, for the BBC or Channel 4, the various different channels, and what I do now it, it, uh, it's completely different. I'm not thinking of television screens. I am thinking of it as a kind of, hopefully, sizable audience um, watching those films in a, in, a, in, a, in a very different kind of space. Can I ask you to give your opinions on that, Jeff? When um, you're filmmaking, how are you thinking about how your film's going to be viewed at the end? Well, I put a lot of thought into that, obviously. But I think more, within short film, I think more about festivals and internet um, internet screening, but just picking up on Joanna, but someone who hasn't done television yet, but would like to, I also just sit up most of the day on the computer, and I'm aware, very aware of iPlayer current TV propeller, and these are what that uh, ultra cheap, but actually I actually do think they're actually quite interesting. I do I think that's where maybe, um, and I, I know that the BBC will uh, are chipping into that kind of thought that that whole internet. Um, streaming thing because it, it allows independent filmmakers like me a chance to, to have what is relatively quite a lot of money really for like a three minute or four minute idea, four grand, three grand, to make something which in broadcast size is cheap but actually it delivers the content and, it's, and it's, it can be very interesting and, it, and you can deliver it on a multitude of platforms. So um, I don't quite understand that quote and um, for someone just going into TV I'd say that I think there can be some really ultra cheap, interesting ideas that um, can voice young filmmakers. Liam. Yes. Liam's just about to start a film course, so he, you know, from the point of view of someone who has all the aspirations in the world, mm. what what are your thoughts on what Rory Kent?